No data, no problem. With the lowest data rates in the country, have extra fun with SLT Extra GB. For more details, call 1212. Centralizing power. Prime Minister pledges in Jaffna that devolution of power is only two years from achieved. I and my party stands committed to devolution. A new addition. China Petroleum and Chemical Corp sets up a fuel oil company in Sri Lanka. Looks to supply fuel to ships along the major maritime route. Celestial phenomenon. Sri Lanka to join the rest of the world to witness last lunar eclipse of the year. This eclipse is the last eclipse of this year, uh, therefore it is a rare event. Decided by the rule book, England becomes World Cup champions after a heart-thumping final. Drama unfolded over an umpire's decision. Experts call it an error of judgment. Kumar Dharmasena should have referred it to the third umpire or the referee and double check before awarding the sixth run. All these stories and much more coming up on 1st at 9 this Monday, the 15th of July 2019. From Other Therana, this is Other Therana 1st at 9. Live from Studio 24 in Colombo. Well, a very good evening and welcome to First at Nine on Another Dharana 24, Sri Lanka's news channel. I'm Katharina Chang. Now on to your top story tonight. Now yesterday was certainly a history-making night for sports. Two finals befitting a Super Sunday as England clinched their maiden ICC World Cup on boundary count. After the Super Over, two ended on a tie, while at the Wimbledon, Novak Djokovic thrumped uh, Roger Federer to bag his fifth title on grass court. At the ICC Cricket World Cup Final at the Lords, it was a heart-thumping and nail-biting finish as England were crowned world champions for the first time in the history of immense cricket. England defeated New Zealand by virtue of scoring more boundaries in a match that led to a Super Over thriller for the first time in a final, which too was a tie. However, with criticism taking over the cricketing arena over the ICC's rule to decide the super power, a super overtie on the basis of the number of boundaries scored, as well as a sixth run handed to England by match official Kumar Damaserina, first at nine decided to speak to one of our cricket veterans on the rule of the game. Up and over, third man's there, I think it's over his head, it is. Electing to bat first, New Zealand slipped from 103 for the loss of two wickets to 241 for all out. Henry Nichols was the highest run scorer for the Kiwis with a knock of 55 runs. New Zealand need early wickets. Chasing 242, England struggled in the beginning but picked up the momentum after a 110 run fifth wicket partnership. England needed 15 runs in the final over, but all that they could manage was 14 runs, paving way to a super over. However, questions have been raised over the veracity of the officials' decision to award six runs for the overthrow in the final over. Can you believe this? It is! I do not believe what I've just seen! According to International Cricket Council rules, not six, but five runs should have been awarded as the active overthrow took place even before Stokes completed the second run. The decision was criticised by five-time ICC Umpire of the Year Award winner and one of the all-time greatest umpires in cricket, Simon Toffel, who said that the umpires made an error of judgement by awarding England six runs instead of five during the Cricket World Cup 2019 final against New Zealand. Are we in for a super over? They've got to go quick! They've got to go quick! Out! I'm sure he's out! We're going to a super over! The Super Over in operation for the first time in a World Cup final also finished on a tie, with both teams scoring 15 each, which led the ICC to count the number of boundaries. Ah, it's got it! It's huge! It's gone! Gattel's going to push for two. They've got to go. It's got to throw. It's got to go to the keeper's end. He's got it! England have won the World Cup by the barest of margins! Agony for New Zealand! 
The world of cricket, however, erupted questioning the laws of the ICC, deciding to hand victory by the number of boundaries hit by a team, many calling it to be an unfair decision, stating that both teams deserved victory. We at first at nine put the question forward to one of Sri Lanka's cricket veterans, Siddharth Vettimuni, on the questions raised by the cricket fraternity. When I read the rules, I too get the impression that it was maybe five runs. Kumar Darmasena should have referred it to the third umpire or the referee and double check before awarding the six runs. But you know, all this happened in the heat of the moment. Rarely do you get the chance of a tie and then going into a super over is good enough. But then thinking of the next step in retrospect, ideally they should have said, OK, you go into a second super over. When a championship is for four years, you can't have joint champions. You, know, you can only have one champion. The sad thing is both teams deserve to win. Both teams played great cricket. It seems unfair, but that's how things go. I think ultimately what won was the game of cricket. It was just a fabulous, fabulous game of cricket. And hats off to New Zealand for the spirit with which they accepted defeat and the grace with which they handled it was most commendable. ICC World Cup champions. 2019 for the first time England Now, history was also made at Wimbledon last night when Novak Djokovic once again proved why he is hailed as the world number one. Djokovic repelled everything Roger Federer could throw at him to claim his fifth Wimbledon title in the first All England club final to be decided by a tiebreaker. The match was the longest Wimbledon final in history and the first one in which the club's new rules stipulating a deciding set tiebreak at 12 12 was deployed. A highly anticipated final between two of the sport's greats always had the potential to go the distance and this match lived up to expectations and more. The fans, unable to watch at times while leaping to their feet and chanting at others, a nerve-jangling final set turned into a classic. When Federer had two championship points at 8-7, Djokovic held his nerve to save both and then break back, eventually taking it to the new tiebreak at 12-all. The top-seeded Djokovic showed nerves of steel to crush Federer's hopes of claiming a ninth title with a 7-6-1-6-7-6, 4-6, 13-12 win and becoming the oldest to win a Grand Slam title in the professional era. played in such a magnificent final, one we will remember forever, but I guess it's hard to take. I will try to forget, <laughs> but uh, no, it was, a, it was a great match. It was long, it had everything, I had my chances, so did he, and uh, in a way I have to be very happy with my performance as well. I hope I give some other people a chance to believe that the 37 is not over yet. I gave it all I had and I still feel alright, I still stand, so it's good and I, hope, I wish the same for the other 37 year olds. <laughs> It's quite unreal, to be honest, to, to, to be two match points down and, and, and to come back. Roger said that he hopes that he gives uh, some other people a chance to believe that they can do it at 37. I'm one of them. Uh, <laughs> he inspires me, for sure. Now, getting back to our local news, our Prime Minister Rana Vikram Singh has pledged in Jaffna that the United National Party stands committed to devolution of power and the goal is only two years away from being achieved. The Premier went on to say that the government is looking at how power devolution can be brought about, not just in the provincial level, but also at local authorities. It took us time for people who have lived here thousands of years, the Sinhalese, the Tamils, the Muslims to get together. But that integration process is carrying on and we have to go further ensuring integration that we are all Sri Lankans. To be, we can be proud of being Sinhalese. I am proud. I am proud to be Buddhist. But I am proud to be Sri Lankan. And I am proud that there are people who are Tamils, Catholics, Muslims. It also requires a lot of rehabilitation work. But this was an area damaged by war. We are also now taking into consideration the issues of the war widows. But more than all, we must also come to a political solution. We came in the hope of finding a political solution. We discussed one, but unfortunately we didn't have a majority in parliament. No one had a majority in parliament. So it dragged. But I like to say 
that I and my party stands committed to devolution and we will discuss it and implement a devolution which gives the type of powers you want which is acceptable to the Sinhalese, to the Muslims and others. Surely the next two years finalize this question how devolution will work not only at the provincial level but also at the local authority level because at the moment there's a lot of conflicts in between. We are very very close to it. In the next two years let us clinch it and finish it and then proudly say we are Sri Lankans and we are integrated. Language is a fundamental to human communication and is a key marker of identity. This is why it is essential that the rights related to language are ensured for every citizen in Sri Lanka because the failure to do so will adversely impact equal citizenship status, meaningful reconciliation and national unity as well as the quality of governance. Now it is in this backdrop that the Minister of National Integration, Official Languages, Social Progress and Hindu Religious Affairs has initiated a national program to implement the official language policy. Its objective is to increase language knowledge of the public as well as to promote knowledge of the second language for ordinary level students. I am of the very firm view that the so-called national question in this country is not that bad as we imagine. Tamil-speaking community and single-speaking community, if only they can learn each other's language, second language, that would in turn create understanding between the communities. That will pave way definitely to the real-time national integration and unity in this country. So my ministry is conducting language classes via SLBC, the radio, daily half an hour language course, targeting the children and the, their teachers as well. And we have just now started a television course also by our ministry. So we are bringing people together with good messages. They'll go back home and create real-time Sri Lanka, achieve Sri Lankan dream. President Maitripala Sirisena says that the only way to revive the country from the present state is to elect a government with politicians who are free of corruption and full of humanity. Addressing a gathering in Nuvarele today, the head of state requested the public to make wise choices in time to come. President Maitripala Sirisena declared open the district hospital in Nuvarele, which was built at a cost of 7 billion rupees, funded by the government of the Netherlands. Evagi Anduak, Vinaskal Napi Anduak Hedwe, E Dushane Netigran, Namut, E de Karan Berri Tegat, Anunan Selapidano, Eganisha Pitra Teminis Unuturgina, Monuturgila Gino, Tavamasa Pagi, Mirate Alut Anduak Kadan, Rate Janata, Tavasta Velavino, Eganisha Janata Vishing, Unutur, Monutur Nokiana, Pirisidu, Sebe Mana, Adi Ratan Adre, Garana, Dushan and Wanchaw in Tur, Sebe Avanka. Deshapala king Andua Kadan Rati Janata Water Chandabalayam. Loki Dunan Ratal the Elaval up is Susum Helena. Anni appear at a megan tapitagan barikil. Berika Makne Kran in Ethika my praste. Mirate Laksadasi Rajase, Harriet Tamangi, Kari, Harriet Istakarana. Deshapala king of Pitam Varadan Lumana Queen. Official leader Mahindra Rajapaksha insists that the death penalty must not be implemented, although it is declared a punishment in the penal code. He expressed these views in response to questions raised by journalists following a Buddhist religious event in Piliandala today. Chairman of the Election Commission, Mahinda Desha Priya, said the Commission will put its best efforts to hold the presidential election in due time and that no one can postpone the elections from being held during November 10th and December 8th. Addressing media in Kharutara today, Desha Priya also said that there is no problem whatsoever in holding the presidential election before the provincial council elections. Palasabach and the Visim Kalinti Bud, Eka Janadi with your Neda Badawa Vedigi and Prasne, Emma Kishima Prasnak Ne. May Avasana Avasta Vediuna, Avitama Penis it in a Major and Commission Sabah, Palasabach and the Visim, Janadi with your Neda Peratian Nonik and Mate. Major and Commission Sabah, Janadi with your name, Yamita Kalasima Tula, Enam November, the Havenidat, December Atavenidat, Atara Pavet Timet. 
සම්පූර්ණ වෙර යොදා ක්‍රියා කරනවා එය කල් දැමීමට කිසිවෙකුට අවකාශ නැති බව තමයි අපේ මතය ඒකම පලසව ඡන්ද විමසීම තබා ගැනීමට අවශ්‍ය ක්‍රම වේද ව්‍යවස්ථාදායක හරහා පනත වෙනස් කර ගැනීමේ ගරු ජනාධිපතිතුමා සමග සාකච්ඡා කොට සීමා නිර්ණය වාර්තාව ගැසපත්‍රයේ ප්‍රකාශ කිරීමෙන් එම නැත්නම් එතුමාලව අධිකරණයේ මත විමසීමෙන් එසේ නැත්නම් අධිකරණයේ පැවතෙන පෙත්සම් විභාගයේදී අධිකරණ තීන්දුවක් ලබා ගැනීමෙන් එක් කොයි ආකාරයකින් නෝ අපේ වචන වලින් කියනවා නම් අතුරුදහන් කරලා ඇති එම නැත්නම් හොරු වරන් තියෙන පළාත් සභා ඡන්ද විසීම ලබා ගැනීමට මැතිවරණ කොමිෂන් සභාව බලාපොරොත්තු වෙනවා Sri Lanka Podujana Perumune intends to declare the election manifesto of its presidential candidate on the 8th of October. Addressing a media briefing in Colombo today, Chairman of the Sri Lanka Podujana Perumune, Professor GLP, said that discussions between his party and the SLFP on plans for the presidential election will be concluded before the 10th of August. Alut Janadi Padivarea, Diorum Denova, December Masi, Palavana Sati. अपे विश्वास करो अपे जनाधिपति अपेक्षक वार्ता सहगत जग्रहण अत्पत्नी मेन पशु पार्लिमेंट तुने देखक बहुत हिताम पासवेन अपट लबा गणीय मठ पुलवान वे गे वर्तमान पार्लिमेंट विसूर पार्लिमेंट मति वर्णयाक पात गणीय मठ इध अर मुनतिवतम अभी श्रीलंका निधास पक्षे समग सा आरंभ कल दट पहा कवसान कल अपे अपेक्षा अगोस्त धावी दाटी से साकसान करांट अभी इदिपत्क जनाधिपति अपेक्षक गे प्रतिपत्ति प्रकाशने अक्टोबर अटवन दिलदीमठ अभी बलापुर The Colombo district organizer of the National Tawhid Jamaat organization Muhammad Fawaz was granted bail by the Colombo Chief Magistrates Court today. The bail order was delivered by the Colombo Chief Magistrate Lanka Jayaratna after taking into consideration a letter submitted by the Attorney General. According to the letter the Attorney General stated that considering findings of investigations he has no objection to grant bail to the suspect. Thereby the suspect was released on two, two personal sureties of 500,000 rupees each and the chief magistrate imposed a ban on his overseas travel. Muhammad Fawaz was arrested on April 29th over suspicion of uh, plotting further terror attacks when they discovered CDs belonging to the NTJ in his possession. Leader of the Lanka Sama Samaj Party Professor Thissavitharana is highly critical of a said international monetary fund requirement to amend labor laws in Sri Lanka. Professor Vitharan alleges that such laws will be favorable to the employer putting employees at a disadvantage. The IMF has agreed and insisted that our labor laws should be relaxed in favor of private employees both local and foreign. They have decided to set up a new labor law uh, which unifies the 54 different labor laws ordinances and regulations that that exist in the country and have evolved with time by a single law but this single law rather than having mutually acceptable labor conditions both from on the side of the employer as well as the side of the employee has now been totally put in favor of the employer and with that we cross over to a short commercial break and make sure you stay tuned for more news Space enthusiasts are set for a treat tomorrow as the world is set to witness just not one but two rare celestial events. Sri Lanka will join the rest of the world to witness the last lunar eclipse of 2019 which will begin at 12:13 a.m. tomorrow where about 65% of the moon's surface will be covered by the dark shadow of the earth. Speaking to first at 9 director of the astronomy and space science unit of the Colombo University professor Chandra Jayaratna went on to say that the world will also witness Jupiter and Saturn being close to the moon where it will be at its brightest this year. Sri Lanka and the rest of the world will witness its last lunar eclipse for the year tomorrow coincidentally falling on the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon landing. Director of the Astronomy and Space Science Unit of the University of Colombo, Professor Chandra Jayaratna told First at 9 that tomorrow's partial eclipse will be a rare event for planet Earth. 
This eclipse is the last eclipse of this year and the next eclipse that is visible to Sri Lanka as well as to the world is on 26th of May 2021. Uh, therefore, it is a rare event to watch this eclipse. 13 minutes after midnight, you can uh, see that the moon is entering into the penumbra of the Earth's shadow. Only the uh, dimming of the moonlight will be there. But at 1.31 in the morning, that is on 17th morning, the moon will enter into the dark shadow of the Earth. That is what we call umbra. And when it goes into the umbra, that you can see a black area of the on the moon and it will be gradually increasing and 3 o'clock in the morning uh, the greatest eclipse occur and at that time 65 percent of the moon uh, will be covered by the shadow of the earth and then it will be gradually uncovered and 429 uh, it will be uh, no eclipse visible to us. Professor Jayaratna also brought to light of another phenomenon which will occur on the night of the eclipse with Jupiter and Saturn being close to the moon. At the same time you can see a celestial phenomena uh, where uh, you can see the giant planets, two giant planets of the solar system, Saturn and Jupiter very close to the moon. The best time to see Saturn and Jupiter in this year is this period because it's away from the sun and you can see the full planets if you use a uh, telescope. In 2019, so far, the world has witnessed five eclipses, three solar eclipses and two lunar eclipses and also a rare planet transit. On to one of our headline-making news, a China Petroleum and Chemical Corp known as Sinopec Corp has said today that it set up a fuel oil company in Sri Lanka as it looks to supply fuel to ships. The new unit called Fuel Oil Sri Lanka Co Limited has been registered in Hambantota on the southern tip of the country, according to a report on the website of Sinopec Group, parent of Sinopec Corp. Fuel oil is a refined product mostly used as bunker fuel for ships and is also burned in power stations. The move marks the latest investment in Sri Lanka by China, which sees the South Asian island nation as a pivotal part of its Belt and Road Initiative infrastructure plan. Sinopec stressed the strategic location of Hambantota port on the Indian Ocean along a key shipping route between the Suez Canal and the Malacca Strait, which is transited by two-thirds of global oil shipments. The market to supply fuel to ship had huge potential, it said. Now, in March, India's Accord Group and Oman's Ministry of Oil and Gas signed a 3.85 billion US dollar deal to build a 200,000 barrel per day oil refinery near Hambantara port in the biggest single pledge of foreign direct investment ever made in Sri Lanka. China Merchants Port Holding China Harbour Engineering Corp and other Chinese companies are investors in the port and industrial zone. Sinopec has set a company with targets of 10 million tons of production capacity by 2020 to supply low sulfur bunker fuels that meet the clean emission standards set by the International Maritime Organization. Meanwhile, China's economic growth slowed to 6.2% in the second quarter, its weakest place in at least 27 years, as demand at home and abroad faltered in the face of mounting U.S. trade pressure. Meanwhile, U.S. President Donald Trump today pointed to the slowing economic growth in China as a major effect of U.S. tariffs and warned that possibly much more were to come. Also, oil prices rose slightly today as Chinese industrial output and retail data topped expectations, but gains were capped by overall figures. Brent crude futures rose 29 cents or 0.43 percent to 67.01 US dollars a barrel, while US crude was up 23 cents or 0.38 percent at 60 dollars and 44 cents a barrel. All the second quarter GDP growth was lowest in decades. China's quarterly growth reading of 1.6% was ahead of forecast, pushing world shares towards an 18-month high and steering the Aussie dollar and copper upwards. The health of the world's second largest economy is closely watched by financial markets as the Sino-US trade war gets longer and costlier, fueling worries of a global recession. Bitcoin slumped more than 10% over the weekend to a two-week low as fears of a crackdown of cryptocurrencies grew on mounting scrutiny of Facebook's planned Libra digital coin. Bitcoin fell 11.1% from Friday to $9,855 early today, its lowest since July 2nd. 
The original cryptocurrency slumped 10.4% on yesterday alone, its second biggest daily drop this year. It was last up at 1.3% at 10,319 US dollars. Meanwhile, Sri Lankan shares gained for the fifth straight session today to hit a near three-month closing high as foreign fund inflows hit a more than a seven-year high due to a block deal. Foreign inflows hit their highs in more than seven years after Singapore registered LOLC Private Limited bought shares of LOLC uh, Finance uh, PSC, accounting for 90% of the day's turnover. We now have a brief report on today's CSE performance. Both capital markets continue to generate a positive sentiment. The secondary market commencing of the week, market yield witnessed no change while overall market saw ultra thin volume. And market participants remain on the sideline ahead the weekly T bid auction so on Wednesday. The stock market closed higher with a, the turnover hit 15 months high due to a block trade in LOLC finance. A net foreign inflow also witnessed after four foreign days outflow mainly on LOLC finance. Sri Lankan rupee ended marginally lower at 175 rupees and 65 to 75 cents against the US dollar compared with Friday's close of 175 rupees and 45 to 55 cents. Let's now take a look at the day's forex rates. Let's cross over to short commercial break, but make sure you stay tuned for more news. The launch of India's second lunar mission was halted yesterday, less than an hour before the scheduled blast off due to a technical problem. India's space agency said the countdown stopped 56 minutes before the launch after a technical snag was observed in a launch vehicle system. The lunar mission called Chandrayaan-2, which means moon vehicle in Sanskrit, would have been a first for the country that is attempting to become a space superpower as well as the fourth country after the United States, Russia and China to make a soft landing on the moon's surface. Chandrayaan-2 is uh, to focus on the lunar surface, searching for water and minerals and measuring moonquakes. A new launch date will follow soon. Newer China's foreign ministry says its government and Chinese companies will cut business ties with U.S. firms selling arms to Taiwan, declining to give details of the sanctions in a move likely to worsen already poor ties with Washington. Last week, the Pentagon said the U.S. State Department had approved the sale of the weapons requested by Taiwan, which amounts to $2.2 billion US dollars worth of tanks, missiles and related equipment. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman Geng Shuang said the arms sales were a violation of international law and harmed China's sovereignty and national security. Now, dozens of people have been killed as the monsoon floods rip through Nepal, Bangladesh and northeastern India. In Nepal, police have rescued more than 1,400 people since the deluge started last Thursday, affecting more than 10,000 households. Meanwhile, Bangladesh's Cox's Bazaar, where more than a million Rohingya refugees are encamped after fleeing a military crackdown in Myanmar, has been hit by at least 23 inches of rain. According to Reuters, the Brahmaputra River, which flows through India, Bangladesh and China, has burst its banks, swamping more than 1,800 villages in India's northeast Assam state. Millions of people have been affected by rising floodwaters across the region as part of the seasonal monsoon. And with that, we conclude this edition of First at Nine. Thank you for joining us and have a pleasant evening.